Okay. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar today. I am uh, Loa Worm, and I'll be your moderator today. And I have my two lovely colleagues with me, Julie Smith and Steve Ball, who you will also be hearing from. And I am just going to give one uh, technical uh, update to my colleague, my IT colleague, Cartridge, is it still possible to kill the cameras of people? Because we would actually rather not have cameras on people from a tech perspective. Thank you. Okay, sure. good. Fantastic. Okay, so before we dive into all of uh, all of the details, there's a lot of uh, practicalities that we just want to run you through. There's a lot of people here today, and, and that's really fantastic. Thank you so much. We will be recording the session, and that is also why I just asked that the cameras will kill, simply because it's just so much easier to, for us to handle everything from a GDPR perspective if we don't show names and faces of people when we want to post it afterwards online. This is also why we will not be taking questions during the presentation, but we'll pull them towards the end and then we will be reading them out loud without specifying who asked what, because then we don't have to deal with GDPR. The recording of the session will be placed on fsc.org slash fsctrace as soon as it has been processed. So you will be able to go back and share it with colleagues and see it again. We aim to have around 15 minutes for Q&A around the end, and you can place your questions in the Q&A box throughout the entire presentation, and you can vote up the questions that you like, and then we will take the questions with the most votes first so that we make sure that we ask all of the burning questions or answer all of the burning questions first. We likely won't have time to get through all of the questions that we have. We haven't been able to in the other sessions, what we will do is we will take those questions and we will make sure that we answer them in the FAQ that we have on the website afterwards. Okay, so before we get started, we have a bit of an announcement from our end because you may already have noticed that our platform has a new name. It was before formally called FSC Blockchain and we have decided to future-proof that name uh, because we have so many new features coming up in the horizon that are planned and which aren't directly dependent on blockchain technology. So we instead decided to name the technology for what it does. It is a platform that enables true traceability. So therefore, it is from here on out called FSC Trace. And why don't we start with diving in a bit more about what FSC Trace then does, because we have a lot of new participants here today. This is a reoccurring webinar where we evolve content over time, and there are a lot of new names in the participant list, which we're really excited about. So we want to just start with a basic introduction to what it is that FSC Trace does with this cool new video that we have produced, and then we'll dive into more of the nerdy details afterwards. So. The Forest Stewardship Council has been fighting for resilient forests and forest communities for more than 30 years now. Over that time, supply chain traceability has become increasingly difficult as goods travel the world in more and more complex ways, making it ineffective and insufficient for today's sustainability goals, legislation and companies aiming for ambitious targets. To fix this, we're shaking up supply chain traceability at FSC. Introducing FSC Trace a secure digital record for verified transactions and sourcing data, ensuring streamlined compliance and verification at every supply chain stage. How does it work? Powered by blockchain technology, FSC Trace lets FSC license holders confidentially, flexibly and efficiently access and exchange data in near real time, aiding verification, due diligence and compliance with evolving regulations. FSC Trace enhances our commitment to certificate holders by allowing participants to verify supply certification status at the point of transaction, generate verified traceable claims about traded products, and record and share data on the raw materials in FSC certified products. How does a trade get verified on FSC Trace? First, you enter a trade. The trade now appears in both partners' records. The counterparty confirms the volume of the product traded. If the volume matches, the transaction is verified. That trade or block is added to the blockchain and the trade has now been verified. 
how do I upload transactions? Depending on your needs, there are several ways to upload data. Direct entry, record individual transactions directly via the website. Bulk uploads, upload spreadsheets with hundreds of transactions at once. And API integration, integrate your IT systems with FSC Trace using an API. This will enable relevant data to flow between the two systems. What type of data will FSC Trace provide? FSC Trace helps certificate holders comply with upcoming regulations like the European Union Deforestation Free Regulation, or EUDR, by capturing geolocation and time of harvest, product type and classification, species in the product, volume, mass, weight metrics, and country of production. How do I control my data? With FSC Trace, you have full flexibility over how you use it. Your entire product portfolio needn't be on the platform. You can choose what products to include, how much information to share with trading partners, and customise sharing settings for each partner. Plus, all data is encrypted when it leaves you, ensuring it stays secure. And neither FSC nor certification bodies have access to the data unless invited by you as a certificate holder. How do I export data? We are building a reporting tool which will be launched in early Q4 of 2024. In this tool, companies will be able to create reports required by legislation, such as due diligence statements for the European Union Deforestation Free Regulation, EUDR, and data sheets needed for CSR reporting. Additionally, it will enable you to export FSC required reports such as volume summaries, species lists, and trading partner overviews. Data will be available both as raw data in spreadsheets and as compiled reports. How do I get started? FSC Trace will open for all FSC license holders in early Q3 2024. You can start preparing for FSC Trace today by exploring our data templates, organizing your data and engaging your trading partners in data readiness exercises. Learn more at fsc.org slash FSC Trace. Okay. So, we're not going to talk about the European deforestation regulation, but I'm willing to bet that a lot of you are in this webinar today because of EUDR, either directly or indirectly. So, we're not going to dive into everything that FSC is doing in terms of giving replies to EUDR. We've already have a, had a series of webinars in that on that very specific context, and I will post uh, links to that in the chat as soon as my part of this presentation is done. The reason why I am mentioning EUDR here after all and why we're mentioning it so much in the video is because it is currently raising the bar for all of us. It requires a completely new level of data gathering and supply chain knowledge than we've all been used to. And as a result, it is driving us and it is driving our community to the next level of supply chain integrity and due diligence. So, oh, I skipped the slide. So. In everything so far, we have been focusing on FSC Trace, but FSC Trace is actually not a standalone system. It is part of a larger web of tools that we are building. It connects seamlessly to a variety of tools and systems that are all forming comprehensive support structure that can enable companies to meet stringent compliance requirements with ease and with precision. So firstly, FSC Trace connects to our geolocation tool which is under rollout with forest management certificate holders right now. Here, it checks for a consistency with geolocation of the FSC certified forest area, ensuring that the geolocation that has been uploaded to FSC Trace is in fact inside an FSC certified forest area. Secondly, it connects with other core tools such as the upcoming FSC Risk Hub, and this is because we are adding a reporting tool to, uh, to be an integral part of FSC Trace. So this tool will support companies in the future with creating both the very comprehensive EUDR due diligence reporting, which you will need upon request by competent authorities, but it will also enable companies to create the due diligence statements that you need, which needs to capture geolocation and time of harvest for the products that are traced on the FSC Trace platform, then it can connect directly with the EU Traces platform when that becomes available so that it can push information directly into the EU system 
get a due diligence reference number returned back from that platform and then pass it on to the next level in the supply chain. And then lastly, which is for us an all-encompassing aspect of legal compliance, FSC Trace can store and manage all certification and legality documents. So it can become a repository that can act as a source of truth, enabling companies to have all of the necessary documentation to prove their adherence, both to the current legislation, such as the Lazy Act or the EUTR, but also to EUDR when that enters into force. And the platform is also built in a way where it can be expanded in the future and utilized for all legislation that are coming up in the future. So in essence, FSC Trace as a platform and why we're focusing so, so much of, on FSC Trace is because it is in the center of all of our different platforms that we are, that we are um, rolling out currently. It is where you can communicate and integrate various systems so that we can ensure that companies who are operating within the FSC system have a robust and reliable means to showcase their commitment to legal and sustainable practices. One of the questions that we get asked a lot in these webinars, but also outside of them is, well, why do we need a system like that? Because we have chain of custody certification already. Why do we also need an extra tool on top of that? So let me just explain that real quick. I'm sure that you all recognize an illustration like this of an FSC supply chain with the different parts of FSC certification throughout where you're starting with forest management certification in the beginning and then you have chain of custody in the middle and promotional licenses towards the end. The challenge is that this setup does not enable or require that data can travel effectively throughout the supply chain. And that makes it very difficult to live up to the upcoming legislations and the increased demands for data and transparency around the world. An example, it does not enable geolocation and time of harvest information to be captured in the beginning of a supply chain and then travel with the product throughout the supply chain. It also does not enable product specific data to travel with the product while not without revealing all of the actors in the supply chain. So as a result, it's really difficult if you're in the end of that supply chain to get to the data that you need to know about origin of your product without knowing all of your trading partners. So this is why we need a tool like FSC Trace to help us share these crucial pieces of information much more seamlessly in the future. Before I hand, uh, over to my colleague Steve to get nerdy about the platform itself, there are a couple of, of few core questions that we always get asked and that we might as well get out of the way from the outset. The first one is about overall access. Who can use it? How much does it, does it cost? Um, and the use of FSC Trace will be voluntary. We of course hope that as many as possible will use it. Uh, but it's up to each and every FSC license holder to choose whether or not they want to sign up. We will not be charging for FSC Trace core functionalities. It will be an integrated part of your FSC certification cost or your promotional license with no additional cost. We are, however, likely to add premium features in the future. This might be report, advanced reporting settings, it could be risk alerts, it could be advanced integrations with your own systems, et cetera. All of these features are not part of the presentation today because they have not been developed yet and we have not costed them out yet either. FSC Trace will focus on FSC certified products and it will not cover other types of products and it will not cover non-certified products. We know that there is a call for it to be able to do so, but this is beyond the scope of what FSC is able to take on at the moment and is not something that we will expand upon. And lastly, we know that a lot of you are looking at different systems and are looking into the easiest possible solution. Uh, and we completely understand that because so are we. So we are working on interoperability, both with other traceability platforms that are being developed out there and with the EU traces platform. We aim to provide direct integration with the EU Traces platform as soon as that becomes possible. And we will be offering API solutions for companies who would like to integrate directly into their own systems. 
In the future, we are also looking into how can we integrate with other traceability systems or geospatial systems so that the impact of different actors in the supply chain choosing different vendors to help them in this challenge would be minimized simply because the data would be able to travel between the different systems. However, this last part, this external integration will not become available until 2025 at the earliest. And then lastly, I'm also already touching upon one of the complex questions when I talk about integration and who is choosing what. So one of the, la or the last question that I will be covering is what happens in the event that I am using FSC Trace, but my entire supply chain is not. Undoubtedly, the value of FSC Trace will increase the more of your supply chain is using it. However, there are some benefits that you start with receiving as soon as you implement the system, even if it is just you on FSC Trace or even if it is just you and a few of your direct trading partners. The first benefit that you get the minute that you sign up and you indicate who your suppliers are is that you will start getting a verification automatically of your supplier's certification status. So you will, in other words, no longer have to look them up manually on our database and take screenshots to verify that you have conducted that verification. The second benefit is automation of some of the required chain of custody certification requirements. So if you use FSE Trace to log your sales in both directions, you will get automated volume summaries and species and product group lists. And this will happen even if your trading partners are not on FSC Trace. The third benefit is the ability to share additional data throughout your supply chain, which for which you can use the optional data field. This could be useful if only your trading partner is on the blockchain, but a bit further down in the supply chain, they are not on FSC Trace. So if your trading partner then obtains the geolocation and time of harvest documentation, they can use these additional voluntary fields to upload the information that you need. This is, of course, less verified than if the entire value chain uses FSC Trace, but it can be a workaround in the interim. If all of your suppliers back to the forest are on FSC Trace, this will, of course, be where the true power of the uh, blockchain actually starts to unlock. Uh, you will then be able to inherit crucial data points such as time of harvest and geolocation. We are working on solutions for how can we enable data about geolocation and time of harvest to travel in supply chains where the entire part of the supply chain is not an FSC trace, because we do know that this will be a reality, especially in the beginning. This will likely involve more work for the ones using FSC trace when they have gaps in their supply chain, but it will enable FSC Trace to deliver crucial data points in the interim while companies are joining. So those were the most asked questions and I will now give over slide control. I think actually, Steve, you already have slide control. So why don't you take it away for your part of the presentation? There we go, it seems to work. I do, thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. Uh, so I, I think I'm hardly needed. We had such a great video earlier on that you probably know everything I'm going to say, but uh, we're going to try and go into a little bit more technical detail. So firstly, just resetting the context again for us. Traceability. We've got this simplistic concept up here where you can imagine going into the store to purchase a new chair and there could be a QR code on that chair. You scan that QR code and then you just... You see where all the different parts of the chair are from, all the different forests. You could even perhaps get, uh, uh, imagine getting data like uh, how much carbon is being protected in those forests, the biodiversity, all sorts of things we could give data about that, so long as we know where it comes from in the first place. And that is the key point about traceability. That said, traceability it's much easier and sort of makes a lot more sense in that kind of discrete product like a chair because you buy a whole chair you never buy half a chair or a bit strange if you do however a lot of the products that we know come out of fsc certified uh, supply chains are produced in a more sort of continuous type operation 
paper and pulp is a big example of that, also liquid rubber, but many other cases too. And in those continuous operations, you're not tracking exactly which pile of inputs are contributing to a particular output. Your system's just not set up to do it. And so we need our FSE trace tool, if it's going to be of any use to you, to also cope with that, which is what it will do so. So instead, we, rather than matching individual inputs to individual outputs, we'll use a date range. And then it's up to you to decide what date range should be used to, to set uh, the, the range of uh, inputs uh, that are captured. So if you want to set it back for, for two years worth of your purchases, then we will include all the purchases over the last two years for you, or we can just cover the ones that you purchased last week, entirely up to you. And you could also set it up to say segregate between two different uh, pulp plants and you've got uh, separate uh, inputs you're recording there and use different date ranges on those. So all under your control. Uh, as already discussed, traceability is allowing us to transmit this product data along the supply chain. So at each point in time, we have that same data that hopefully started at the forest, but otherwise perhaps captured at a later date and move it along. The volumes can change over time, uh, well, over the uh, across that supply chain. Normally we'd expect volumes to go down, but occasionally volumes can actually go up. If you imagine you're making a, a table with some metal legs, then we need to allow the, the volume to go up. We can also, by the way, capture volume as weight if that uh, suits you better. And indeed, that is what the EUDR require. Uh, we can combine data in composite products. So where we've got two different species from different forests being combined, that gets easy. And in fact, if we're doing two different forests, then we can do 20 different forests and even 200 different forests. The beauty of this kind of technology solution is that it scales very easily. And as Noah mentioned previously, also we'll cover all the different FSE product categories, and that includes controlled wood, at that point, because the controlled wood supplier is not an FSC certificate holder, then uh, it needs to be the, the FSC certificate holder who are bringing it into the FSC system. They would be the ones who would need to enter that uh, data that they've obtained from their supplier. At some later date, uh, we would love to extend FSC trace down to those controlled wood suppliers. And that would make, I think, life a lot easier for the the uh, certificate holder who uh, are the ones bringing it into the FSC system. So how can certificate holders, I guess that's most of you, upload data to FSC Trace? The video earlier covered this really nicely, so I won't spend long on this slide, um, we've, but we've got these three different mechanisms. And we expect that most of you will spend most of your time certainly in the early months using bulk uploads before the bigger, perhaps more uh, technically sophisticated companies might move to, to API integration. The direct data entry probably won't be used very much by many of you, uh, but it's really important the first day you start using it to understand how FSU Trace works. And of course, by having that user interface, that means that if at any time you've got something it's not quite working as you expect. You can go in and find the individual transaction and see what's happening with it. Before, however, you can start recording any transactions, one of the things that's really important about using FSC Trace is that you have configured it properly. Uh, so there are two main steps you need to do there. One is configure the products. Their variations that is both the products that you are buying and the products you are selling. If you are a wholesaler trader, then you can configure a product as one that you both buy and sell. Whereas if you are a processor, that's somebody who buys in some inputs and transforms them into a different kind of output, then of course you would have different products that you are buying from the ones that you're selling. And then you also need to configure your trading partners. That is to, to tell FSC Trace who you are buying from and who you are selling to. Once you've got all of that data 
available. And by the way, you can provide that same data also as bulk uploads, because we know some companies have a lot of products and a lot of trading partners. Once you provided all of that data, or at least some of it, then you can start registering trades based on the, the data that you have configured the products and the trading partners. And in order to see that, we've got another video. I think I might need to ask you, Lower, can you start that for me, please? In this video, I will show you how purchases or sales are uploaded and matched between two trading companies. Now, in most companies, this will of course happen primarily in bulk, meaning uploading an Excel spreadsheet with multiple claims or via an API integration. But for the sake of demonstration, we will show you how it's done on the website, just so you can see how it works. Now, I will be the purchasing end of this transaction. I will be buying logs from a forest owner. So when I go to record a trade, I can either do a purchase, I can do a manufacturing run or what is called a processing run, meaning I am taking one input product and transforming it into an output product. For example, I'm taking these logs and I'm creating a chair out of them, or I can make a sales. But because I'm purchasing, I will go to purchase transaction. And when I go to purchase transaction, this page will appear. And what I need to do here is now to identify who am I trading with. I am trading with the forest owner, Liam's Forest. I will need to insert the document ID. This would typically be your invoice number. Let me just put one in here. That is a unique identifier. I need to insert the date of the transaction. Let's say I just had this invoice today. I then have to choose which type of product I have. In this case, it's logs that I have as my only thing that I'm buy, that I registered buying. I need to choose which type of FSC. In this case, it's FSC 100%. And I need to insert how many of them am I buying. Let me see. I'm buying 295 logs, and then the system automatically calculates the total volume. I can, of course, choose to overwrite the volume if it's different. I click Submit, and now that transaction has been submitted, as you can see at the bottom, and it is now registered. Let us then navigate to Liam's Forest. We are now on Liam's Forest. And as you can see, we have a couple of unmatched transactions. One of them is the transaction that we just created when we were David. So let's record a sales that matches this purchase from David so that we can get it to be a matched claim. So let's see up here, you can see that right now we have a total of 13 matched and three unmatched claims. Let's try to get that number changed. Go to record a trade. And this time we are doing a sales transaction. Again, we say we are trading. This time it's with David. We have the exact same reference ID. It's the same invoice number, of course. And it's the same batch ID. Now, Liam has more products defined, which means that he can now choose between different products. It was logs that we were trading with. We we're selling David 100% FSC, and we were selling him 295, which gave a total volume. So let's submit. It has now been submitted. If we navigate back to the dashboard, you can see that the three has now become a two. We're to a total of 14 matched claims, and it has been removed from the number of unmatched claims. Of course, the vast majority of you who will be using the FSC blockchain will not have to do this manually by entering numbers. It will be through uploads or through API connections that automatically takes care of this information being moved in larger quantities. If we wanted to investigate a bit on this particular match claim and or potentially to correct it, we can of course also do that. To do so, we navigate to product ledger and we can then find this particular claim inside of the ones that are registered. 
The particular one that we just registered is this one. So if we mark that here and we click I, we can now see that it is a match transaction. We can see the information that was typed connected to it, and we could make corrections if we needed to. So that's how easy it is to register and match a claim on FSC blockchain. Of course, most of this will be automated, but that's just to show you how the mechanics work. Great. Always better to listen to lower dulcet tones than mine. Uh, so uh, a little bit more on FSC Trace. Um, so building on what we've been talking about, uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, on the video that all the data that you put into FSC Trace will be encrypted uh, at source. And it will be encrypted with, uh, this is getting a bit technical here, but a key that is unique to each license holder. What that means is that we can't read it because we've got to know your key, not just a master key. Um, so if it's all encrypted that way, that's great. Your confidential business data is protected, but then that doesn't maybe help very much if other people can't get access to it. We said earlier, part of the point of FSC Trace is to allow critical data to flow down the supply chain together uh, with the product. So how do we enable that? We let you choose if and when you want to share data. The person or company who upload that data, we call them the data owner, and they are always in charge. They can decide what they want to share, whether they want to share a particular transaction or perhaps all the transactions with a particular customer. If you've got a customer who's inside the EU and you know they're always going to need this data for EDR purposes and you can say right I will share this data all the time with that customer. Uh, you can also allow that same customer who might be only part way down the supply chain to share your own data onwards or you can say well no if you're going to share my data with somebody else I want to, to uh, be able to decide on that before you just uh, send it on. And uh, you can choose to, to do it over just a defined period of time, maybe for the next two months, or you can say, you know what, uh, I want to carry on trading beyond two months, so we'll, we'll let it run indefinitely. Always under the control of the data owner, and at any time they can choose to revoke uh, any sharing that they have authorised. So when is all of this going to become available? Uh, that's a big question I'm sure many of you are asking. We are doing a stage release uh, between August now and November with an aim for access to everyone with an FSC license by the end of November. We are allowing in users in groups because we want to make sure that we can cater for the support that will be needed and to provide a good experience the first time you choose to log in. And also because we want to capture and act upon feedback we're getting from early adopters. There are two ways you'll be able to get access to FSC Trace. The first one is you may get an invite straight from us in FSC to join the platform. Happy days. The second one is more organically happening. That will be if one of your trading partners are already on the platform, then they can extend an invitation to you because they want to record their trades with you. We know that uh, many of you, you are eager to see the system as soon as possible and explore it. You'll see from here that it's a graduated process and you may find that November is a bit of a long wait if you're in one of the last groups to get access. To help those uh, so affected, we are exploring how we can make a demo system available so that you could all have a, a look for yourselves and get familiarized. Uh, hopefully, my colleague Julie is just posting a question about this in the chat right now. Uh, if you are interested, if you think this demo system could interest you, then please just give a like to that question. That will give us a, a rough indication of whether this is the sort of thing that you want and whether it would worth us investing the time and effort to make it happen. In the meantime, we'd also encourage you all to take a look at the data bulk upload templates that we have already released which we expect to be the dominant data entry mechanism for most companies, most of you in the first few months of using FSC Trace. 
I'll come uh, onto these details in a little bit. Uh, but by the end of November, we expect to have opened up FSC Trace to all FSC license holders. And this is also when you should have access to the due diligence reporting aligned with the requirements of EUDR. Steve, so, I am just going to pause you for a second because apparently we can people can't uh, like the comment in the chat. So uh, I'm just going to call. Yeah. The one thing we didn't test in advance, I'm just going to see whether somebody is in Rosie Teasdale. I'm going to call on you because I know you. Can you, in the Q&A, copy paste the question that Julie posted and paste it into the Q&A? Because we cannot, from our end, post a question into the Q&A. And then you can actually like it there because there is a like button in the Q&A. Really? So that was... Hopefully, a workaround. <laughs> Thank you for interjecting. I'm also noticing the time, and we do want to allow time for questions. So, I'm going to try and speed through my last few slides. Uh, so, very possibly, those of you while we were going through that little uh, correction there have already read this slide. If you want to get involved, then uh, scan these QR codes and send us your interest. Uh, in order to sign up, and I think the information is there online, essentially you've got to uh, get first an FSC Connect account. Most of you should already have that, about 75-80% of our supporters do. But if you don't, you can ask today your certifying body to uh, initiate that process. And as soon as they've done that, uh, you can get uh, be ready uh, with that FSC Connect account. And then once you're invited to FSC Trace, get on. How can you make the best use of that time? As we signed, just get the ETLA signed and then start testing these bulk upload templates. And also start talking to your supply chain because as Lowe was talking earlier, this all becomes much more useful if uh, you can uh, have also your suppliers and customers on it. If you're an isolated node, then you get rather less value out of it. Let me just spend a few minutes on those bulk upload templates. So they're already available. If you go onto uh, the uh, fse.org, you will find uh, those templates. Uh, you can download them there from fse.org slash fse trace. You get a little zip file, which has got five bulk upload templates. Remember earlier, I was saying you've got to configure fse trace before you do anything else. So there are templates there to configure your trading partners and products definition. You don't have to use them. You could do that just on the user interface, but if you've got lots, then you might find it useful to do them there. But the most important ones are three, four, and five. Three for sales coming from a forest. That is primarily for FM certificate holders, but also the chain of custody certificate holders who've got a due diligence for bringing in the controlled wood. All other transactions on the chain of custody go through the COC transactions. And if you are a processor, that's taking inputs and turning them to something else. That, uh, as we discussed earlier, is a processing run. And so there's a bulk template for that as well. Uh, all these bulk upload templates are structured the same way. They have, you can see on these screenshots here, various formatting designed to help you see when you've got the right data in the right format, doesn't pick up every issue. So the, the individual spreadsheets don't talk to one another, that's deliberate because then it actually gets much harder for you to use. So it can't check whether the license code you put on the uh, COC transaction sheet is the same one you've already used to configure. You have to wait till you upload it to find that one out. But it can tell you, is this a well formatted license code or certificate code. If it's not in a format that we recognize, then it can uh, flash up red for you. And then you'll know that's something you've got to put in. Or if there's just data that you haven't yet put in, that's where the, the yellow highlighting comes in. So there's quite a lot of help there to help you start to be prepared, and know that you've got the right data in the right format, ready for upload into FSC Trace. And that's why we encourage you to start looking at these right now because there's a lot that you can learn and start thinking about how you can get that data ready. 
Uh, yeah, got instructions. Okay, we'll skip through these. Uh, and then I think, let me not get stuck on all these details. If we have any questions, I can come back to them. Finally, and I'll skip past this quickly, but also a uh, new bit of functionality we've got ready for you as soon as you join. We've got the sandbox, and that's going to be really important, I think, because, of course, the first day you start using FSC Trace, you might want to test a few transactions, and this will be a way for you to do so, both with a dummy trading partner and with your real trading partners. So that will be there. It'll be very important. Once you're ready, once you've gotten confident about it, then you can uh, start to, to use it uh, in, in the real live database. Uh, and I think this is back over to you, Loa. It is. Okay. So we know that adopting new technology is a quite complex process and that you really want to learn um, and get trained before you dive in. So we're taking that quite seriously. We're hosting these webinars with evolving content every two months. They are always recorded. Uh, and every two months we add additional content to them, which is also why we are running out of time as we evolve more and more. We also have uh, a lot of DA FAQs on our website. There's more than 60 questions where we try to detail all of the answers to the questions that we've had in the past um, that you can find also on fsc.org slash trace. Within the next month, we will also be releasing detailed user guides and training videos, and we will be enabling a dedicated support help desk. Um, and this support system, which will be tiered, should address the unique, unique uh, needs from different user groups, both from tr technical troubleshootings for IT specialists, and also just to the very uh, mundane, I can't get access, what do I do as the next step? So our dedicated help desk will be able to uh, answer those. We've prepared them for that, and we will expand their capacity as we see a growing user base to guarantee that we always have help at hand. So we really aim to ensure that every stakeholder can realize the value of FSC Trace very rapidly. And with that, we transition to the Q&A part of uh, this session. And I just need to enter uh, to uh, change the formatting of, of the Q&A so I can see who voted the most. I'm very happy to see that we actually do have uh, some interest for a working demo uh, before October. If you haven't yet said yes or no, or basically said yes, if that is of your interest, remember to go there because that does give us an indication of whether that's something we should spend some of our time and resources on. Okay, so Steve, I think this is for you. We have a question that is asking, can I use FSC Trace for my EUDR due diligence statement so that it can automatically be transferred to the EU platform if the forest is not using or providing geolocation data with via FSC Trace? So can we collect the data for the EUDR due diligence statement without the forest being on FSC Trace? So uh, you would need to provide that data into FSC Trace because it will be required by EU Traces. Yeah, they won't let you submit a due diligence statement without it. So if you are going to use FSC Trace to submit on your behalf, which is the the goal here, then you would need to provide that data into FSC Trace. Uh, as was sort of mentioned a little bit earlier, but always worth repeating because I think this is a really critical issue we will uh it's best if that data comes all the way from the original forest but if it doesn't we are creating a mechanism to allow people further downstream to say well i've got this data i got it through some other means i'm going to enter it here and that will then be available to submit to eu traces so yes it needs to be loaded onto the system by somebody, otherwise we can't submit it on your behalf, but uh, it can be loaded on later down the supply chain, not necessarily from the forest. Thank you, Steve. Next question, can Trace or FSC Trace already be connected to SAP? Yes, it can. The tool for that is the API. So uh, 
we are publishing this API, which allows you to do almost everything that you can do with the user interface. There are a couple of really unusual operations, which sort of involve sort of quite drastic corrections where we kind of said, actually, we don't want this to be called automatically down the system. We think a human needs to be involved, but it, for all ordinary operations, then you can control anything you can do on the user interface. You can also do via the API. So what you would need is then for your uh, IT team to write some code from uh, your SAP uh, to FSC Trace. What we will be doing, I think, in 2025 is publishing some uh, sort of reference implementations that will make that coding process easier. Uh, but the API will be published from uh, the day that uh, the system is available. So you can get started straight away then. I'm just going to take us to a similar question, but a bit different, uh, which is the one that's top of the question. So I'm, I'll make sure to do it. But uh, we are being asked, how can we make sure that we will have a link to the EU software when it's not even ready? How can we make sure that when it is uh, coming out, that it doesn't come out as a beta that's not tested? How can we make sure that uh, that will work? So the good news is, is that the EU are making testing available. We've been invited to use it. We're in that process uh, of checking that that our code can interface with theirs, and then we'll be be putting in this this test data. So that one is doable. Of course, the the implication also of that message is that if EU traces release is delayed by some reason, then of course we can't actually submit live data to it, uh, everybody will be, be stuck with that situation. Uh, but as and when it is available, we will have the code to enable data from FSC Trace to go straight into it on your behalf. And I'm assuming also, Steve, that if and when or if that becomes the case, we're looking into what it could contingency plans be for us to enable certificate holders to download the needed data for a due diligence statement so that they at least have it in a PDF format that they can then post to a consignment as part of shipping documentation so it's not stuck in harbor? Yes, and you, you basically outlined exactly the solution. <laughs> so we would provide a PDF. Uh, it would be a bit of a manual nightmare, I think, for everybody. Uh, hmm. uh, I guess that would be on the EU to work out how they would handle that. <laughs> A, a bit more technical, though, uh, in terms of handling larger batches of products. So the question is really, how do I proceed if I buy a large batch of paper and I keep it in stock and I use it little by little for several products? How does that handle? Yes. So what uh, FSC Trace will do is it will have inventory control. What that means is that you can't sell or process something you don't have. So if I've got uh, 10 logs sitting in my yard and I want to saw up enough for 50 planks and I can only get three planks per log, then it just, it won't let me. Uh, for that, I need uh, you know, 30, 30 logs, say. Uh, so uh, it will prevent me from doing that. Uh, but you can use, I could literally measure, I could say, well, I'm using one log at a time. So you could... If you were kind of a bit nuts, you could even record one sheet of paper at a time. That would be pretty nuts. A more sensible way would be you could record one ream of paper at a time, or you could just do it more on the continuous processing where you say, well, we buy paper and we use it up in, say, weight terms. And we just say, right, we've now used up uh, two kilos of, of paper and whatever that is, it, it, it reduces your inventory by two kilos. So various different ways. And then it would be also up to you whether you want to track it on a per delivery basis, as in, well, I got one batch of paper from one supplier. Now it's a beautiful, uh, perfect white. And then I bought yellow paper from a different supplier and I track, track it separately, or whether you just chuck in all the white and yellow paper and it doesn't matter, you treat it all as the same. It's up to you as to how you configure FSC Trace, whether you're differentiating between these things or not. Mm -hmm. So I guess the flexibility that we have in the chain of custody system as such will be mirrored on FSC Trace. Yes. At what point do you enter or see polygon data? I'm sorry, all of these questions seem to be to you. That's okay. Uh, here to answer questions. So polygon data should be entered by the, uh, the 
FM certificate holder in the case of uh, FSE 100% material. In the case of controlled wood or other controlled materials, that data should be entered by the chain of custody certificate holder who have the due diligence system uh, that they are bringing into the FSE uh, ecosystem uh, for the first time. So those are the two who should be entering the data uh, and who will be encouraged to do so. But as we discussed earlier, if you've got a gap in the supply chain, uh, it might be even the FM certificate themselves or somewhere else in the middle, then we will allow that data to be entered or re-entered, re-uploaded by others further down the supply chain so that you can start to use the system, start getting value out of it. Um, but we do anticipate that for most people, that would be really quite painful to do. And so best of all is if you get your suppliers to use FSC Trace and then the, the data will come through to you automatically. Mm -hmm. A bit of, no, it's not actually in the same realm, but how will FSC monitor and verify no deforestation in FSC forest? And will that information be integrated into FSC Trace? You want to take that on or do you need uh, to Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll perhaps give the, the technology answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, and even perhaps the ultimate answer, because how does FSC monitor no deforestation? Well, we have this fabulous certification system in which auditors visit the forests every year. And we think that that is really strong. We are very confident in that auditing process. We think that it beats any kind of reliance on just remote imagery. There's problems with trying to do that on any kind of global systemic basis. So that's the key way in which we do it. Uh, and we will then be integrating data on that, particularly through the new uh, FSC Risk Hub, uh, we showed that briefly on your, uh, perfect. Uh, so the risk hub will be capturing your risk assessments. And then via FSE Trace, we know the certificate, uh, the license code of the certificate who first supplied that material. So now we can go get their risk assessment and pull it through and have that all available for the uh, due diligence reporting. I would uh, just clarify here that there is a distinction between what you need for the due diligence statement, that's the thing you send to EU Traces, which actually don't need the due diligence data, you just need to make a statement, we have a due diligence system and we've checked it. But of course, if the competent authorities come asking, then they will expect you to have all the, the necessary information and that's then when all of that data will be available for you at a clicker button straight out of FSC Trace and, the EUDR aligned reporting tool because we've we've captured it all and funneled it downstream for you. And by that, you actually also uh, partially covered the next question, but I think we might want to underpin that. What indicators are covered by FSC Trace for meeting EUDR? So I'm wondering whether we should just define what is in the FSC Trace and what is in the risk hub and how it all links together. Yes, so the risk hub will capture all the indicators listed on the FSC risk assessments. Uh, you can already go and download those risk assessment uh, templates from our website. Those were published uh, beginning July. Uh, for all certificate holders, you can start using them today. Uh, so all of those indicators will be captured through those templates. The simplest way to do it is I think there's an Excel template. You can fill that out. The risk hub will allow you to then upload that uh, uh, completed risk assessment in the same way that you can upload the uh, the bulk data in FSC Trace, and that will then be available. And as I said, we can then capture that uh, from the the license code of the, um, the certificate. So all all indicators required, all captured through that process. Okay, good. I just did a refresh on the most upvoted questions. Um, and there are two ones that are they're sort of connected. I'm thinking we'd take those as the last ones. The first one is, how does this work for FSC Mix? And the second one is, how does this work for chip sales when you can't determine exactly where it comes from when all of the wood is mixed at the mill? Would we send every location and if we do that, how will the supplier will be, how will the supplier be able to match the transactions? 
So handling FSC mix as the last one. Covered that in two minutes. (laughs) So let's start with with that one. So if you can shift to that side where we had the controlled wood being captured, yeah? Mm -hmm. Um, And so let's imagine that this is a mixed sources chair for a moment. I know that's not most of it, but let's imagine it is, yeah? So we've got maybe the chair legs are controlled material and everything else is um, FSC 100%. Uh, and uh, the chair legs are quite short because they obviously have to fit in the 30% limit. So the chair legs come in on the bottom bit of this uh, uh, supply chain diagram and the rest of the chair comes in the top bit. So the uh, the data on the geolocation, species, etc., cetera, and, um, that is entered by the FSC certificate holder who are bringing that controlled material into the FSC system. Now they've got that due diligence system under the existing FSC terminology there. Yeah, So they have to enter that, whereas on the top arm, it's come straight from the FM certificate holder. Everybody's using FSC trace. So the data is entered straight there. When it is processed at the factory, uh, that's uh, point three here, then uh, they that data is combined together and we can see both the controlled wood bit, species B, and the FSC 100% bit, which is species A. Now, when though you get the, uh, the chip sales, this is, and if you can go back to the slide, which has got the continuous processing. Yes. Chip sales, this is the one that basically is continuous processing. So we understand that a lot of uh, uh, sawmills do work in this way. You're just not tracking exactly which supplier is delivering which uh, which bits of of, of chips or, or logs. So at that point, you just use a date based uh, range, and you tell us, well, we're not sure, but we're pretty sure that it's no deliveries more than six months ago. So we'll take that as the range. And the EU allows that under UDR under what they call reporting in excess. So that is allowed. Uh, you are increasing your risk because, of course, you might be saying that it includes uh, sources that in practice haven't contributed to this particular product. But if then there is any problem with that forest, now you're sort of on the hook, even though it actually didn't contribute to that for that particular product. But if you're confident about your, your sources, and hopefully if you're FSC certified, then you are, then uh, all should be good. And it can just be all included in how you report what is included. I think we're about and out maybe of time. The- Yes, we are out of time, but the one thing that I want to just highlight here is because the last part of the question is how will the supplier be able to match that transaction? I think it's it's important to clarify here that the supplier is just verifying the uh, the volume that you two as a trading partners have traded together. So that's the part that they need to verify. Have they sold you X volume of a product or not? Um, and the same goes in the other direction. So they don't verify the the origin or the geolocation, the, the, which is why correct. those two things are very independent in reality. Yes. So okay, the... we are at time. There's a lot of questions left, and I'm so sorry that we didn't make it through all of them. I will read through all of them and make sure that we answer as many as we can if in our FAQ if they aren't answered already. We will also... Um, give you all an email where you get a link to this recording, you get a link directly to the FAQ, and you get a PDF of all of the slides, even the ones that we had to skip through really quickly. So you get all of it in one package. Thank you all for staying. I see that we hardly had any drop off of participants, which is always really re encouraging because then we know that we, we hit some content that you needed to know. We hope that you see we see you in the next webinar as well, where we hope to show even more. So thank you all. Thanks, Phil. Bye.